Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Tippy and I'm a Senior Product Training and Support Analyst with FCC Ag Expert. Today we're going to take you through a typical payroll run. So to start out, we're going to go back to payroll here on the left hand side and we're going to select transactions. And this is where all of our paychecks will be created. You'll see there's a new payroll button here. Uh, there are two types of paycheck that you can create. You can create a regular paycheck, which will have deductions on it, or you can create a payroll advance, which just issues funds to employees um, against future paychecks. And the system will, so if I, you know, for instance, we're going to issue one here, um, the system will track that and you'll see that coming off of future paychecks. So starting out, let's start with advance. So here uh, we would set the date and I'm going to set this for the middle of the month because we're doing our May payroll and you can choose which account it's coming out of. We're going to have it coming out of our main bank account and you can set the next check number. So if for instance I looked in my box and my next check number was not 539, it was instead 540 because I'd had to destroy a check for whatever reason, I can just change that here and the system will then print that, uh, record that as check number 540. The advance we're going to issue this month is going to be for Alex and we're going to say he came to us mid-month and just requested an advance on his paycheck and we were happy to oblige and we gave him a check for $500. That's all we need to do to issue a payroll advance check. We can click on save and you'll see here there's that paycheck for uh, or sorry that payroll advance for Alex Peterson. Um, there are a couple of options you have here under these three dots at the end of the row. Uh, you can print a check so if you if you are printing checks on your printer you use that to print the check. If you handwrite the checks you can still print a stub to include with that handwritten check and if we'd made a mistake we could just click on this to reverse the paycheck. Um, we're going to go ahead and just make it look like we printed a stub because I'm handwriting checks today and it gives us this PDF that we can just print off. So you'll see it's just listed here, advance, $500, year to date is $500 and we don't have any earnings or deductions because we haven't issued a paycheck for them yet. And it also, it, at the top right hand corner there you can see it's got the check number as well as the dates involved here. So we'll close that, we'll pretend I printed it, and you'll see here it's told me I have printed the stub, so I can keep track of if I, you know, am printing things, um, which have been printed, which haven't. So that was our payroll advance that happened mid-month. We're going to go ahead now and do payroll for the end of May. So I'll click on new payroll and click paycheck, and we're going to set this back because uh, this was for pay period ending May 31st for the month of May and our check date will say that I got around to that on June 1st was the date of my checks. Now a quick note here about checks, CR or check dates rather, CRA doesn't care when the employee earned the money necessarily so much as when they received the money. So if I was looking on my payroll reports these would, this would be considered June income as far as taxes are concerned, so um, it would show as part of the June remittance report. Um, if I want that to show May, then I need to make sure to just backdate that to May 31st. And then, of course, that transaction in my bank reconciliation would just carry forward as an uncleared item. Again, you can set your bank account here, and we set the check was 540 for the advance. That was the last one we did. We can check our box and make sure just in case, but 541 is the next check, so we can go ahead and create these checks. So we're going to start with Alex, and he worked for us for the whole month, so we're going to say he had the full 160 hours. And the system will calculate his gross pay. Um, we had also set up a housing benefit for him where we were covering $140 of um, his housing expense. So that's a benefit there. And of course, we had set his vacation to be paid out on every paycheck. So you can see it's including $246.92 for his vacation pay. And it's bringing back that advance that we issued. So it'll deduct that off of his net pay. Let's go ahead to Andrea, and we're going to say Andrea just worked for one week for us while she was here in May, so we're going to put 40 hours for Andrea. 
and we didn't have any benefits set up for her um, and we were, we were going to accrue her vacation pay or hold that back and then pay that out on later vacation paychecks. So you'll see it's calculated $59.19 there uh, just to go into her vacation holding account. Let's move on to Jason. And we're going to say Jason worked a couple weeks for us, so he's got 80 hours in there. And I'm going to save. It's going to again calculate his gross pay, and we had his vacation pay set to accrue as well at the same rate. So you'll see his vacation pay, because his hours were higher, is about twice what Andrea's was. And we can go from there. So let's. that's all we do to create the paychecks. Let's go and see what's actually going to happen in the system here. We can click on Review. So you're going to see Alex Peterson's gross pay is calculated at the 45.2692, which is that uh, salary amount or hourly wages amount plus his vacation pay. The federal tax coming off of that is 508.22 calculated by the program. There's the provincial tax, CPP, and EI. We also had for him a deduction of $35 that we were charging him for rent for his uh, accommodations. So we've got that set to come off of his paycheck as a deduction. And you'll see there's the net pay there then. Um, which it would, would include the reduction of that $500. Uh, for Andrea Smith, we have her gross pay at the $1,000. $26, and that didn't qualify, uh, being as she's a monthly employee, uh, it wouldn't take her above her exempt income, so you'll see that her deductions for taxes are zero, but she's not exempt on CPP or EI, so you see those deduction calculations are happening automatically. We also had a benefit for her where we had set up an RRSP, where she was going to be paying $100 per paycheck into the plan so you'll see that $100 is coming off and that gives us her net paycheck there for Jason he worked twice what Andrea did so you've got some hours in there for him that did qualify for taxes so he's got the taxes deducted CPP and EI of course and then his net pay calculated that is all you need to do to create a payroll run so we would just click on save now and we'll see those paychecks are all going to be recorded and we'll show in our list along with that advance. And we can see them here. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have uh, going to print our checks for these ones. So I can go and put a check mark on all three of these. And instead of having to use those three dots on the end, I can just come up here under print options and go print checks and it will process that request for us and give us the PDF just like it did for that payroll advance and I can open that up you're going to see I have my pay stubs and there's the check form and then another pay stub so one I can keep as far as pay stub and then one that I would give to the employee with their paycheck and it details out all of the details of their payroll from their earnings uh, to their deductions and if we look up here we can see that Alex uh, advance is no longer outstanding there because that's been paid back. All that's there now is the vacation pay. You can see that advance for payment over here now. And that's it. We would click on print and that's our paychecks printed. One other thing I just want to go to here is quickly the settings. Um, when you're printing your checks, you can set whether your check form is stub, check, stub, or check, stub, stub. You can have it include your business name or not at the top, and you can set your check date format as well as the stub date format separately. And you can set that to whatever you would prefer and just click save when you're finished. That's it for the payroll run. Um, if you need help with anything that you've seen in this video, you can come up here to the question mark at the top right hand corner. And there's a nice little link there for our online community where we have a knowledge base and discussion boards and a blog. It's also where you can go to initiate a click to chat session with one of our support team members. You can email us support at fccagexpert.ca. And as always, you can call us at 1-800-667-7893. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're all having a lovely day.